I don't mind singing, but but this always makes me feel uncomfortable. But um, but no, this is a genuine genuine honor and a genuine pleasure, and it's it's. It was probably four and a half years ago where I felt like the Lord called me out of one ministry and into pastoral ministry, and it's been a long, long learned, long walked upon journey. Um, and and you know, maybe someday church will be able to share some of the story with you. I won't I won't take the time now, but but there's been so many people like the Lord is. I, I knew when I was 16 that the Lord had called me into ministry, and and something happened in my early 20s that that introduced a lie into my life that made me run from that calling for 15 years. And it was, it was a series of many people who loved the Lord and saw something in me that kind of spoke life into my life and brought me back into uh, the calling that the Lord had put me into when I was just a kid. And so there's so many people that have been along that journey that, that have made a huge difference in my life. To, to Dan Whiteman, who was a worship pastor, who first looked at me and said, you're called to more than you're giving. What's that about? And it wasn't this statement of, of like, do more. It was a statement of affirming and saying, I see something in you that um, I want to pour into. And, and that began a two-year mentorship process. And then that, he handed me to, when he went back to another place, he, he put me in the hands of, of, of Don Overton, who was a, a pastor for just a brief period of time, who kind of showed me, like, there's a pastoral side of you that I really want to pour into. And then when, when he left, Dan Wetzel came along and he said, you know, it's important, you know, it's a good thing for you to do your studies. Go get your studies. It's going to help you. It's going to equip you. It's going to affirm you. And, and then after him, it was it was Steve Grusendorf who helped me through the ministry studies program for two years. And just, just there's so many people. And, and what I'm trying to get to here at church is, is less like, hey, I'd like to thank my so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, but like, I am genuinely thankful for those people. But at the same time, if, if genuine heartfelt people who love the Lord didn't speak into my life, I'd probably be doing something else right now. And, and the reality is, is there are people in your lives who need the Holy Spirit in you to encourage them to take that step of faith. Whether that's towards ministry or towards witnessing or towards that next state, step in their faith journey. Uh, the Lord uses, as, as, as Jonathan was saying, Man, it's according to his power at work in you and in me. And so I believe that God wants to do a great work at this church. Um, you know, not because I'm a pastor here, but because we are the church together here. And that he wants to use us all to encourage one another to continue to take steps uh, towards his ultimate calling in our lives, which is to grow closer to him and to make him known. And so I, this has been a long long journey and there's a big part of me that it, that has just i have loved every single second and so don't don't hear anything negative in this statement but for about four years I've, I've i've had books just handed to me and given to me and said okay read this book write this report and every single one of them has been a massive benefit i have loved every single thing i've read so to come to the end of the season and be like what am I going to read now? <laughs> like, there's, there's like this almost refreshing like wow we did it. it, it this was a, a story that Sarah and I started four years ago that has been a tremendous amount of work, and, and all of it has been a, glory, a glorious uh, process. But, you know, I'm thankful for all of your support. I'm thankful for Jonathan. I was really happy that Jonathan could, could, could be here today because he's been here through this entire process for me. And, um, and so it's, it just means a great deal. We're going to move to uh, our, our final songs. And, and just as we do every week, uh, worship team, if you can come back up. Just as we do every week, uh, we're going to have a time of communion. And, and I love, you know, we almost, maybe we're going to push this off just to save some time. Um, and, but the reality is, church, like, communion is one of those things that, that puts the focus exactly where it needs to be. And that's on Jesus Christ. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sing a, a, maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't, but a newer Christmas song uh, to sort of reflect again on what Christmas is all about. And as we do that, I want us to just, again, put ourselves in that mentality of we're going to partake in communion. This is his body, which was broken for us, for our, the forgiveness of our sins, for the reconciliation of us to God. This is the, the cup represents his blood of the new covenant, which was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. So um, whether you wait for the, the, for the first song and sort of weigh these things through your heart and approach the table, um, this is a welcome invitation for anybody, whether you're a member here or, or if you are in Christ Jesus, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, this table is for you. And let's do this in remembrance of him. We're going to sing this song and have some time for communion. We'll, we'll sing one more closing worship song after that. 
and then uh, and then we'll close for the day and, and move towards the the um, uh, potluck, which I'm really excited about. So <laughs> let's uh, let's worship together.